Animal, Animal Rights in Islamic, Christian and Jewish Sharia, Law, Part 1 Introduction In the name of Allah, A.R. Rahman, the Most Gracious, Arahim, the Most Merciful. All praise belongs to Allah, the Lord of all the worlds, who sent Muhammad, peace and blessing of Allah be upon him, as a messenger of glad tidings and as a warner, as well as to call the whole world to the path of Allah, and as a bright light. May Allah's blessings and peace be upon him, his family and his companions. Among the greatness of the merciful Islamic law, Sharia, is that it preceded for about 1,400 years all the international organizations that concerned with animal rights. It established for the animals such rights that the entire world had only recently noticed in the 20th century. God willing, we will list some of them in this book. If this is the case with the animal, showing it mercy and kindness, and establishing many rights for it, how is the case then with the human being, whether Muslim or non-Muslim? The Islamic law is a law of mercy and rights and it gives importance in giving everyone his rights regardless of his lineage, race, color, or religion. However, the greatest right recognized by the Islamic law and it calls mankind to it is the right of Allah the Almighty, the creator of mankind and animals. If the human rights and animal rights organizations were truly honest in the search for rights and calling people to it, they would have been interested first in the right of God Almighty, the creator of mankind and animals. The right of Allah is made clear in what was reported by Mu'idi H. bin Jabal, may Allah be pleased with him, that the Prophet may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him asked him. Do you know the right of Allah upon his servants? I said, Allah and his messenger know better, he said. The right of Allah upon his servants is that they should worship him alone and should not associate partners with him. Sahih al-Bukhari Chapter 1 Islamic Perspective on Animals Islam maintains a moderate position in its view of animals. It did not exaggerate in raising its status, as did some other religions that raised the status of some animals to the status of a god, such as those who worship cows and mice in India. And neither did it degrade the status of animals nor strip its rights, as did some countries and cultures that allowed the violation of animal rights. Rather, Islam recognized many rights to animals and warned severely of any infringement to those rights. Islam explained the wisdom and objectives of their creation in this universe, and that in their creation is a great blessing for us, because of what we benefit from them. Allah, the Almighty says, explaining his bounties upon us. He has created the heavens and the earth with truth. High is he, exalted above all that they associate as partners with him. Three, he has created man. From Nutfa, mixed drops of male and female sexual discharge, then behold, this same, man, becomes an open opponent. Four, and the cattle, he has created them for you, in them there is warmth, warm clothing, and numerous benefits, and of them you eat. Five, and wherein is beauty for you, when you bring them home in the evening, and as you lead them forth to pasture in the morning. 6. And they carry your loads to a land that you could not reach except with great trouble to yourselves. Truly, your Lord is full of kindness, most merciful. 7. And, he has created, horses, mules, and donkeys, for you to ride and as an adornment. And he creates, other, things of which you have no knowledge. 8. And upon Allah is the responsibility to explain the straight path. But there are ways that turn aside, such as paganism, Judaism, and Christianity. And had he willed, he would have guided you all, mankind. 9. He it is who sends down water, rain, from the sky, from it you drink, and from it, grows, the vegetation on which you send your cattle to pasture. 10. With it he causes to grow for you the crops, the olives, the date palms, the grapes, and every kind of fruit. Verily. And this is indeed an evident proof and a manifest sign for people who give thought. 11. And he has subjected to you the night and the day, and the sun and the moon, and the stars are subjected by his command. Surely, and this are proofs for people who understand. 12. And whatsoever he has created for you on the earth of varying colors, and qualities from vegetation and fruits, botanical life, and from animals, zoological life, verily. And this is a sign for people who remember. 13. And he it is who has subjected the sea, to you, that you eat thereof fresh tender meat, i.e. fish, and that you bring forth out of it ornaments to wear. And you see the ships plowing through it, that you may seek, thus, of his bounty, by transporting the goods from place to place, and that you may be grateful. 14. And he has affixed into the earth mountains standing firm, lest it should shake with you, and rivers and roads, that you may guide yourselves. 15. And landmarks, signposts during the day, and by the stars, during the night, they, mankind, guide themselves. 
16, is then he, who creates as one who creates not? Will you not then remember? 17, and if you account the favors of Allah, never could you be able to count them. Truly, Allah is Gaffer, off forgiving, Rahim, most merciful. 18, and Allah knows what you conceal and what you reveal. 19, those whom they, the polytheists, invoke besides Allah have not created anything, but are themselves created. 20, they are, dead, not alive, and they know not when they will be raised up. 21, your God is one God, Allah, none has the right to be worshipped, but he. But for those who believe not in the hereafter, their hearts deny, the faith in the oneness of Allah, and they are proud. 22. And Nal 16 colon 3 22. Allah created the heavens and the earth without any precedent for a true purpose. He did not create them in vain, but created them to serve as a sign of his greatness. He is exalted and high above their ascribing others as partners to him. He created man from a despised drop of fluid who then progressed from one form to another until he became a harsh contender using falsehood to attempt to invalidate with it the truth. Being an obvious opponent in his arguing. He also created livestock such as camels, cattle and goats for your benefit O people. Some of these benefits include deriving warmth from their wool and hair and other benefits from their milk, skin and backs. Some of them serve as food that you eat. There is beauty in them for you in the evening and in the morning when you take them out to graze. These livestock that we created for you carry your heavy goods when you travel to places that you would only be able to reach after bearing great hardship on yourselves. Your Lord, O people, is kind and merciful to you as he has subjugated these livestock to you. He created horses, mules and donkeys for you to ride and carry your goods on and for them to be an adornment for you that you can beautify yourselves with amongst people. He will create in the future means of transport and other things that you do not know about. Allah has made it a duty upon himself to show the path that leads to his pleasure, which is Islam. Some paths are that of Satan that deviate away from the truth. Any path other than the path of Islam is deviated. Had Allah willed to guide you all to faith, he would have guided you all together. He, may he be glorified, is the one who sent down free water from the clouds. From this water you have a drink that you and your livestock can drink of. From it you get vegetation on which you can graze your animals. With that water, Allah grows for you the crops that you eat. He also grows for you olives, date palms and grapes as well as other types of fruit. In that water and the things that it gives rise to there is a sign of Allah's power for people who ponder over his creation and use it as evidence of Allah's greatness. Allah subjugated the night for you so that you can find peace and rest in it, and the day so that you can earn your livelihood in it. He put the sun at your service and made it bright and the moon, which he made a light. The stars are subjugated for you by his decree. Which you use for navigation in the darknesses of the sea and land and by which you come to no time etc. In the subjugation of all of these things there are clear signs of Allah's power for people. Who apply their minds, for they are the ones who will grasp the wisdom in them. He, may he be glorified, also subjugated for you the things on earth that he created having diverse colors such as minerals, animals, plants and crops. In what he has created and subjugated for you there is a clear sign of Allah's power for people to pay heed and realize that Allah is a powerful benefactor. He, may he be glorified, is the one who subjugated the sea for you and enabled you to travel on it and to extract what is in it. So that you can eat the fresh and soft meat of the fish that you catch and that you can extract from it jewelry that you and your wives can wear such as pearls and coral. You see the ships splitting the waves of the ocean and you travel on these ships in search of Allah's bounty in the form of profit you gain from trade. All of this is for you to be grateful to Allah for the favors he has given you and to worship him alone. He spread out mountains on earth to keep it firm so that it does not shake and cause you to become unsettled. He caused rivers to flow so that you can drink from them and give water to your livestock and crops. He split in it pathways for you to tread and reach your destinations without losing your way. He made for you on earth clear landmarks that you could be guided by when traveling during the day. He also made for you stars in the sky that you could use as a guide at night. Is the one who creates all these things like the one who does not create anything? Do you not think about the greatness of Allah who created everything and worship him alone without ascribing his partners to him when has not created anything? If you, O oh people, try to count and list Allah's many blessings that he has favored you with, you will not be able to do so because they are so numerous and diverse. Allah is forgiving, as he did not take you to task for being neglectful of showing thanks to him and merciful. As he did not stop these blessings from you on account of your sins and failure to thank him. Allah knows the actions that you, O oh servants, conceal and those that you reveal. 
None of those actions are hidden from him and he will recompense you for them. Those whom the idolaters worship besides Allah do not create anything no matter how little. Those who worship them besides Allah are the ones who make them. How do they worship besides Allah those idols which they make with their own hands? Despite the fact that the idol worshippers made their gods with their own hands, they are also lifeless things that have no life nor knowledge. They do not know when they will be resurrected with their worshippers on the day of judgment, to be thrown together with them into the fire of hell. The only being that truly deserves to be worshipped is only one being who has no partner and that is Allah. Those who deny the resurrection and the recompense, their hearts are arrogant and they do not fear the reckoning. They therefore do not believe that there will be any reckoning or retribution. They are arrogant and refuse to accept the truth. Anal 3-22 One of the aspects of Islam's honoring of animals is that the names of some chapters of the glorious Quran are the chapter of the cow, the cattle, the bee, the ant, the spider, the elephant. One of the illustrious companions, of the Prophet Muhammad peace and blessing of Allah be upon him, used to be nicknamed as, Abu Huraira, the one who has the cat. The Prophet peace and blessing of Allah be upon him called him several times with this nickname saying, Aba here, oh, the owner of the cat.